happening. And this is going to be child psychotherapy Jung. And this is the world you all created. I'm going to have you come up in a second. I just want to kind of get, get the scene here. OK. All right, come on up and surround the world you created, which is not going to be hidden. I guess we'll if, try and leave a little uh, view way, I guess we'll call it. Come. I want to take a picture. Wait, this is recording. Is yes. Yeah, you can take a picture if you want. Let's get it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Little class then. Okay. Now, let's be very, very clear. We are not going to analyze what it is. No, but you'll see. You'll, that it's really to point in terms of Jung. In fact, it's kind of the central difference between Jung and at least traditional psychoanalytic approaches to the symbols. So we're not going to analyze you. We're not going to categorize you or anything like that. We're going to expand you to whatever extent you feel comfortable in sharing. Uh, is, is there, as you look at this, is, does anybody want to add any one thing to this at this point? That's fine if you do and fine if you don't. Obviously, again, you cannot remove or move anybody else's thing. No? We feel good. Okay. Okay, here we go. Who talk, somebody want to talk about what it is they put in? Just, I mean, when did you start? Okay. What did you put in? I put these soldiers in the tank protecting the princess from the dragon. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, of course, yeah, so we have the dragon there, another kind of a T Rexy thing with a big bump on his head. And you have the soldiers in the tank. Yes. Give us some, give us three adjectives describing the tank. The tank? Yeah. Or the soldiers. Uh, well, let's start with the tank. Uh, powerful. Powerful. Um, uh, good. Good, that's it. good, okay. Um, strong. Strong, okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Somebody else? Actually, who put in the, well, we're calling the princess. It could be whatever you want it to be for you. Me. You put in the, is it a princess in your mind? All right, talk to us about the princess. How would you describe her? Um, um, defenseless, I guess. Defenseless. Okay, beautiful. Defenseless. That's why Emma put those things in. Defenseless. <laughs> and guards. Feminine. And feminine. <laughs> okay. Did you put in anything else? Yes. What else? <laughs> the little cow and piggy. Little cow and the little piggy. Okay. Little cow and piggy. Give us describe the little cow and piggy to us. Um cute. Uh, um, small. <laughs> it doesn't have to literally be three, by the way. Okay. So if, if that feels sufficient. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You'll see. Oh, okay. see. Just, those are just little notes to myself. Those are what you're describing. Well, yay for your curious mind. <laughs> It'll serve you well in life. <laughs> Somebody else? Um, I mean, what'd you put in? What did I put? Yeah, what'd you put in? Uh, I put the soldier guy hiding behind oh. it. Oh, wow. We didn't even notice. Yeah. Well <laughs> hidden indeed. Yeah. Soldier guy hiding behind the tree there. And tall. Uh, it, it, well, what, what uh, did you put other things in also? Yeah, I put I put the wizard riding the dragon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I put the wizard so on the dragon because I feel like I don't know, right? The wizards have dragons. <laughs> Absolutely, it goes right hand in hand. Yeah. And then and, and uh, something else? Yeah, then I put some random guy. The catcher. The catcher. <laughs> random guy catcher. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. Well, let's start with soldier guy. How would well, give us some adjective to describe him? Soldier guy. Yeah. Uh, shy. Okay. Yeah. Um, observant. Um, armed. Armed. Yeah. Okay. Well, so armed. What's the meaning, or what's the significance, or what's the? 
mana, power, whatever, around being armed? Um, ready for action? Okay, okay, okay. He's armed, he's prepared, he's ready for action. I mean, I guess it adds some... Okay, so then we have the... Uh, did you see it as a baseball catcher? I did. Okay, yeah. so tell us about him. I did put him there because I used to play baseball and catch. So I said, oh yeah, that's cool. I put him there. That's our first one. That's the one I did the least amount of thinking. <laughs> okay, and now, of course, the wizard. Talk to us. Describe for us that wizard. I just wizard. felt like the wizard would want him to be with his wizard or dragon. So <laughs> I was like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah, problem. You know, That's good. Like, I don't know. I uh, like <laughs> describe him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Adjectives. What's his traits, characteristics? Uh, evil. He's evil. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's evil. He's got to be the kind of princess. <laughs> hey, but no comments on his weird associations. No. Yeah. <laughs> weird dark associations. Not at all. Huh? Was the princess there before you got yeah. the Yeah, yeah, okay. the new one. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but no, yeah, so your associations as you put him in was evil. Uh, evil. Right, that's fine. Um, wizardly? Wizardly. <laughs> say, say a tiny bit more of what um, you're meaning by wizardly. I, we all have our own. Magical. Yeah. Magical, yeah. Um, okay, magical. And then. Um, it's okay. And maybe that's enough. Yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> okay, perfect. So you covered it all. All right. Uh, who put in Superman? I did. Yes, you did. Yeah, I did. There's all, already this like superhero triad, so I just added Superman and okay. Superman. Just okay. Just like, like, add to the force a little bit. <laughs> so, okay, add to the force. But tell us about Superman, your rendition. Um, he just seemed like really like robust. <laughs> okay, robust. Yeah, so he looks powerful and... Okay. He's gonna make a difference. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, that's very important what you just said. Difference match the princess. <laughs> Lois! Lois! Princess Lois. Lois Lane, if you like oh, yeah. the reference. Yeah. Hello. And hey, then sorry. since I added those two, I was like, you have to pick a different kind of fair, so I added the dragon. Oh! Because it's like Wait, wait, that's important. You added the dragon. Oh, the T-Rex. The T-Rex version of dragon. Um, and I'm sorry, and say that again. You added him because... So, actually, I added two superheroes and I wanted it to be like fair, so I added a little bit I just to say. It's five against one. Okay. Okay. And how, I'm sorry, and how would you describe then T-Rex? I'm sorry, what is he? Sharp. Sharp. The guy's sharp. And I guess strong. strong. Sidekick. Sidekick. Okay. Oh, he's sidekick to the other dragon or something? He's already there. Oh, okay, gotcha. And sharp, not a sharp mind, but a oh, no, just angular. Like, like, yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, that, and that's, those, that's, who, that's all, right? Between, okay. Who next? Please. I put this, um, the guy with the horns. Minotaur. <laughs> Minotaur, <laughs> technically speaking, thank you. Our Greek mythologist uh, person. Adjective, confident. Competent. Com confident. Oh, confident. Thank you for clarifying. Confident Minotaur. Um, successful. Successful. Got that pad and <laughs> on the ocean. Um, confident, successful. Uh, strong. Strong. Okay. And did you add anything else? Uh, this, I, I uh, included my adjectives for the things he was holding. So he's holding a coin and a key. Yes. Uh, well, talk to us. Well, but talk to us about the coin. You put well, those there. He was yes. successful in uh, achieving what he wanted, which was the coin ah. and the key. No. Okay, and talk to us, right? <laughs> and uh, he was confident, so he was able to achieve what he wanted. Okay, very he cool. He was also strong. Okay. What does, what, the, he likes that. What, what does the key open? Uh, Whatever comes to mind. The answers. answers. Ah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> 
With that, I'm now withdrawing. Yes, all right. Because, yeah. of course, one of my answers to what, but that's, that's beautiful right there. Okay, somebody else? Please. I put the barn and the rabbit and the tree. Oh, cool. Wait, the barn, the rabbit, and the tree. Okay, perfect. Talk to us about barn. Um, well, I put it there because the animals were there, and they needed a house. Oh, okay. So it's a house. Comforting and shelter. Okay, beautiful, cozy, comforting shelter. Beautiful. And the, I'm sorry, you put the rabbit which the rabbit? The tree. Tell us about the rabbit. They're just names. Okay. But what kind of a rabbit is he? Or her? Or she? <coughs> she? How just any? Just a, just a rabbit. Okay. And the tree. Um, so it's tall. Ah. Palm protected. Beautiful. <coughs> okay. Who put in what's been referred to as the barn? Oh, you did put in the barn. I'm sorry. Duh, you just said. Right. All right. So we got that. And the teepee. Talk to us. Um, so. There was just the dragon and the Batman holding the animal when I came over here, so I felt like it needed like a center. Oh, okay. So I put in the teepee or hut for like protection or, um, well, first I, I picked up the giraffes and it's like a, a couple and they're working as a team to protect who was coming after them. Whoa, whoa, whoa. St. No Thomas here? I'm sorry, you picked... Does that not make sense? No, well, I didn't catch the first part. I'm okay. so sorry because I was right. So this is, like, protection. And yeah. they're working as a team the two to giraffes. look out. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And I'm sorry, were the giraffes already there? No, I chose the two giraffes. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So... No, that's center. Protection. And talk to us about the giraffe. But I'm sorry, I'm missing some great stuff. Uh, okay, what? <laughs> but no, what'd you say, actually? She, she just said, because we just bought a home, so she said, oh. the TP in Tequila. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So, I'm sorry. So, yeah. the giraffes, tell us about giraffes. They're, they're working together okay. to protect the area, um, and they're a couple. Okay. So what's the personality trait? Um, collaborative. Um, um, Open-minded. Okay. Like protective. Okay. Or nurturing. 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 <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay. So then we have this, what looks, ah, perfect. Tell us about her. Who is she actually? She's Pocahontas. Pocahontas, okay. Um, I thought that she could gain animals because of who she is. So I think she's earthly and um, nature-minded. Um, she's very protective of her family. Um, and she has a lot of Okay. And I think it's whimsical um, and innocent. Okay. Na 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 Batman. I did Batman. Aha. Talk to us about Batman. Okay. Batman is holding a monkey. Okay. And he's going to use it as a weapon. Wow. Of course. <laughs> Uh, because Batman thinks outside the box, <laughs> he's very intelligent, and he's in the corner with his cloak over the sand tray because he can handle anything that comes at him. Um, and he's being rather deviant with the monkey. Like, okay. He's like, oh, people don't expect my 
psychic monkey to be thrown at him. But. Okay. <laughs> um, I put the dragon, but the uh -huh. dragon is not me. He's just misunderstood. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. The monkey's happy to serve wherever he can. Oh, the, I was going to ask about the monkey. Yeah, he's the monkey, happy to the serve. Is just proud to be a part of Batman's team. Okay. Um, obviously provides humor, and it's kind of like incognito. <laughs> right, right away, the monkey's going to be slung against <laughs> evil people. <laughs> humor is the first thing I think. Of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the proud. Mm -hmm. oh, that's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was okay. no llama available. There was no llama available. Actually, I've never, never seen a llama before. Okay. While we're on superheroes, Spidey, Spider Man. Oh, I already talked about him. I added Spider Man. Oh. Superman. I don't remember you talking about Spider Man. I said I added two superheroes. Oh, I yes. I but I didn't hear about Spider Man. I'm so sorry. So, because we got Superman, but tell us about Spider-Man. I mean, come on, um, superheroes is their own unique. Spider-Man um, is a little insignificant. A little a insignificant. Bit, yeah. To be honest, I kind of had the thought like, oh, all the superheroes are there in Spider-Man. So just show him like in the middle, and I figured I'd add him just for the sake of including him with a bunch. Okay. Significant though included. Okay. And then we have her. 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 Mm -hmm. Her. 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 Who, who is she? she? Is. Okay. Um, but she represents kind of feminine energy. Okay. Um, she seems like she's in control along with the confident. Okay. Um, so she's feminine energy, she's confident. She's Strong and capable. Okay. Very cool. <coughs> Did you uh, add anything I else? I didn't add anything. That was enough. That was plenty. <laughs> okay, somebody else? Please. I added the gnome. Gnome. Oh, yes, there's a gnome. <laughs> you know it. There's a gnome. I just had a little part of it. There wasn't much in there. Okay. Day, but he's. Tell us about Gnome. Um, he's awkward. He's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, cool well, when I put him in, there's just the dragon and the princess, so he's curious. He was trying to figure out what that was. Okay. He's curious. Um, <laughs> No, that's fine. Awkward and curious. Did you put in anything else? That was it. That's fine. Somebody else? We have a seal there. Is that right? Ah, perfect. Talk to us about the seal. Um, well, I just didn't really like the chaos at all. Okay. I just made my own little oasis. So, Santa reminded me of the beach, so I put a castle by the water and the little treasure chest. Ah, okay. Congratulations, <laughs> Yes, the psychic competition. You've got the most centered psyche. Oh, gosh. No. Um, so, Castle, tell us about this castle. Um, it's impenetrable. Aha. It wraps around the edges. And it's strong. Okay, beautiful. Talk about the treasure chest. It's mysterious. Okay. And highly sought after. Ah, now the key goes to answers. But maybe there are answers in the treasure chest. Maybe that's what's in there. Because we don't know what's in there, or do we? It was the coin. I'm just kidding. Ah, 
the story yes, thickens. The plot thickens. He stole the coin from the treasure chest. Hmm, maybe not. All right. And it's tattered. Okay. Tattered. Treasure chest. And by the way, what's some adjectives for seal? I know he's just kind of hanging there on the beach. Um, he's playful. Yeah. He is silly. It's loud. It's loud. Or, or, or. <laughs> by the way, they bark all day and all night. They have seals by my office. It's amazing. I thought they go to sleep. Then they go to sleep. I realize they take shifts. You sleep. I bark. Okay, my turn. It's unbelievable. Okay. Anybody else? Have we covered everybody? Did you have any? No, actually, I did not. I, what I do is I kind of, though you guys didn't utilize it, I kind of make a river. That's my little contribution in the beginning because it sets up a certain thing. But actually, you guys ignore that, which is fine. Would fun. you like to add something? <sighs> I don't want to add anything in particular. Uh, huh. Well, I'm, I'm a little pulled by this guy. And somehow, would it be okay because it's your Sam world? My yeah, then I won't. <laughs> I won't. Well, that was my error. My, and I actually didn't think about it. It's your castle or something. But that, that's good. Okay. All right. Now, who or what would you be in this world? You could be anything, anyone, anywhere. Who or what would you be in that world? Pocahontas. You'd be Pocahontas. Okay. And what are you doing? Kind of being a part of this, saving this fortitude, like this okay. natural little area. Okay. All right, we're going to go a little. You, and again, remember the first day I said you never have to answer any question I ask you or do anything I ask you to do? Remember that? Okay. If this is the time to uh, use that power, you can. <laughs> I, want you to, I want you to see Pocahontas in your mind's eye. Where, when you're seeing her right now in your mind's eye, where do you see her? What's she doing? Um, singing that song in the movie. Okay. <laughs> running through forest. Okay, she's running through a forest. She's singing that song. Yes. Okay. You come upon her. Okay. She looks at you. Okay. She has something important to say to you. Or maybe it's trivial. I don't know. What is she saying to you? If it's okay with you, share with us what she's saying to you. To remember to connect more so to surroundings versus being in your head. <laughs> That's fantastic. Connect more with surroundings than head. Being in head. Okay. I think you're going to say connect, reflect, or reflect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's right. I need to reflect by the connect, validate, validate. Yeah, well, guys, look, you need the V square and R square. Yeah, no, but okay, thank you. Very good. Um, what time of day is it? Um, dusk. It's dusk. And what's the weather like? It's warm. Warm. And beginning to get cloudy. Ah, warm and beginning to get cloudy. It sounds like June in La Jolla. Yes, it does. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, who, where, what would your dad be at age five? Okay. Or so. Hmm. If we imagine your dad, age five-ish, who, where, what would he be? Uh, in that world. Okay. Probably near this guy. Okay, near this baseball guy? Yes. Okay, so what's dad doing? Playing in the playground with the kids, having fun. Okay, cool. Okay, here comes a leap maybe. It's mm -hmm. okay. All right. I want you to see five-year-old dad. Okay. What's he doing as you see him right now? In the house. Okay. With a bunch of family. Okay. Um, maybe just playing with his siblings. Okay. You were there. <clears throat> adult, okay. Young adult you or whatever. Okay. You can, all right. 
You bring him over to something. You're, okay. What's going on? What, what are you doing with five-year-old dad? Playing with them. Okay, cool. Oh, you, are, you, are you being child-centered in your play? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very cool. And what's he doing as he's, what's, how's he feeling in that engagement? Um, he's excited to play with someone new. Okay. Um, he's engaged. Okay. He's curious okay. as to what's going on. Okay. Um, and he's open. He's willing to okay. explore. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Um, it's 2025. It's Thursday morning, 9.31 a.m. 2025. Who, where, what is future you in this world? I think I'm drawn to say Superman. Okay. Okay, perfect. There you are. And what's Superman doing? Actually, you know what? Forget this one for a second. Superman. See Superman. Yes. See Superman. Okay. Boy, as you're seeing him right now, what's the context? What's he doing? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, we're flying together. You're flying together. Yeah, I'm going to separate you for a second. You're going to okay, have Superman, you're going to have you. No, no, I'm glad you're together. No, that's great. I just wanted to... In, in that moment, I didn't want you to be Superman, and you're not. You're being, yeah. So Superman's there, and you guys are flying together. Yeah. He's like holding you as you're flying around, or? Yeah. Where he's like holding your hand. Okay, holding your hand. Yeah. Oh, like this, and you're flying. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Where are you flying to? To the top of a mountain. Wow. Okay, so now have you landed on the mountain yet? Top of the mountain? You're still in. in... We we're just going past it. Oh, per oh God, just, just going past it. You. Fantastic. So Superman has something to say to you, profound or trite or whatever. What's he saying to you? He's telling me that if I could bring this type of peace into my life, that life would be a lot easier to live. Oh, God, okay. Peace be with you. Okay, perfect. What do you say back to Superman? Life would be a lot easier if I had your powers. <laughs> Okay, and what does he say back to that? We'll have a little dialogue here. Super um, dialogue. Seems like you really like powers. Okay. That will serve you well. <laughs> I don't remember seeing men taking this class, but that's good. Okay. Um, no, uh, okay. He, uh, no, that's beautiful. He's pretty empathetic, but I don't yeah. think he is going to give me any of his powers. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Can he? Can no. he? No, I didn't, well, I didn't think he could. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like he can be an awesome guide to you. Yeah. Actually, is he saying that? Something like, you know, I'm always here. I can't give you, I'm sorry. I can't give you my powers, dude. I'm so sorry. But I'm here for you. I can be a guide for you. You can call on me when you need. Is he doing any of that? Uh, he's a little less empathetic. But oh, okay. A little less. That way he's Superman. Yeah. He's like, you know, he's right. He's not. Yeah, he's busy. The guy is busy. He's not, busy. Not, he's, not he's not even human. He's not even human, really. <laughs> That's right. But, uh, right. He's busy he's with the same guy. Yeah, okay, okay. Anybody else have any, because we're going to have you sit down again in a moment, but before we do, any other thoughts? No, we're good? Okay. Any comments? Yeah, comments, thoughts, reactions, anything you want to, you know, I've obviously guided some things here and there are ways of moving from here right into here, which is really the point. I thought it was really interesting. There was a lot of rescuing going on in different places, which makes yeah. sense given the profession um, yes. of all of us. And then I thought it was really interesting that unconsciously I went to this area and then okay. I found out that it was like an oasis and then yeah. it made sense to me. Oh, like that's where I'm so... at right now, like stress in school, da da da. So being in an oasis. Nice. So it was cool to be unconsciously drawn to like a less happening area. Okay, that's that's marvelously put. Do you know there is? It is really interesting the the power. See if I start like like when I started to put this guy on your castle. No, that's wonderful. You're like hey hey, get him off of my. And I love that there's a connection. There's if you want to say psychic. I mean, look at, look at this thing. I mean, it's this little clitter box, for God's sakes, with some dirty sand from Wind and Sea. You know, it's like, how, could you, how less kind of mystical cosmic could you get? You know, this plastic. I mean, frankly, my sand world in, in the office is wood, nicely made and all that. And it's like, 
And yet, nonetheless, there's mana. There's this energy. And here are these little figures I got at Toys R Us or online, whatever. And here's this kind of decrepit castle, whatever. But there's, it, you're drawn to it. I, I know, I'll keep my hands off it. It's okay, I feel like, feel, see, watch this. <laughs> and that's what's amazing. That's amazing. In fact, you might not remember anything, anything from this class except the figure you put in here. You go, oh yeah, that castle. And they put that, put that guy on it. Jeez. <laughs> Maybe that's all you remember about the class. Or Superman. Yeah. See, I feel more drawn now, not to my figures, but ah. to the wizard that you put ah. in after you said that the dragon was misunderstood. <laughs> okay. So like, okay, so like he has a friend, and like maybe the wizard's trying to like <coughs> communicate to everybody, like he's okay, guys. He just okay. Can't control his fire very well. <laughs> okay. So for <laughs> so so, yeah. so we're all union yeah. therapists for a moment. What would be what would we do next with them? Just, just on the little thing that we've done, just that I've done the model for you so far. What, what would the wizard be saying to the exactly. dragon? Exactly. Well, or if that way, or absolutely, we can do that dialogue, and or I'd have her right now. In fact, I'll do this. I want you to see the wizard in your mind's eye. Okay. And what's he doing? When you're seeing him, where is he? What, what's happening? Well, okay, so I'm still seeing him on the dragon. He can be in there. No, absolutely. Hey, yes. he can do it any He's way you want. He's still on the dragon. So you're seeing him there with the dragon, actually. Yeah. Cool. He's like stroking. It's like, it's okay. There's all these army guys in a tank trying to get you, but it's okay. Perfect. Now you're in that scene. Yeah. What are you doing? Where are you? Um, I'm trying to help the wizard communicate to the army guys, so I guess I'm kind of between them too. Oh, so wait, so in your mind's eye again, you're seeing the dragon, you're seeing the wizard, right. you're seeing the army guys, yeah. and you're in, you're, like, you're in between them trying to communicate. So what are you saying to the army guys, I guess? Um, it's okay. It's okay, it's relax, okay, yeah. no problem. Okay? Yeah. Perfect. Now what's the wizard say to you? Um, Thanks. I don't know. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Maybe yeah, I okay. feel like I guess that communication worked. So everybody's kind of like trying to figure it out. Okay. Okay, wait, maybe we're okay now, but Perfect. So he thanks you. Yeah. Does he give you any gift or anything as a thank you? No. No. Okay. What about the dragon? Maybe he gets to uh, ride on the dragon. Later. I was just going to say yeah. I thought maybe he get the dragon yeah. ride on the dragon. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I get. Yeah. Okay. And so what does the dragon say to you or because dragon's there. What's the, how's the dragon communicate? What's he, he doesn't say? really say anything, but okay. he like he's a lot more calmer and at peace, and is kind of like uh, grateful in his own way. Perfect. And he understands that you negotiate this. He watched this. Right. He saw you do this. But we're gonna have us talk about how he needs to kind of get the fire under control. Then, this, this is obviously not helping his social interactions. <laughs> so you're saying, I love this. So you're saying that to him. Yeah, a little more fire regulation. Affectual okay, fire regulation. can't control right now, well, let's work on this. Perfect. And what does he say back to you? Are you having that, is that a private conversation? Is wizard not there? Is it you and dragon? Yeah. It's just Perfect. Dragon. So I'm you and dragon? On his back now. You're riding on his back now. Oh, fantastic. Are and you flying? Up in the air above up in the everything, air. so it's kind of calm and peaceful. Fan up here above the beach. So up there extra. above the beach. Peaceful. Not bothering the castle. Yeah. And <laughs> and you and you're telling him it's a him or her by the way. Um, it's a him. Him, and you're telling him about having to contain. It's okay. We're gonna figure it out. Okay. And Together. what is he? Okay. What is and how's he? What's he saying or thinking, feeling? Just kind of. He's doing deep breathing. You know. <laughs> Except when he breathes out, the fire comes out. Well, no, he's got to. He's kind of. He's to learn how to. <laughs> Yeah, but it's up, it's up there, so it's not hurting anyone. Oh, perfect. But that maybe that is the so issue. So he has an outlet up, up there. Ah, he can breathe fire, and it's okay. Uh, ah, so you're training him to say, look, you want to breathe fire, go up there, yeah. breathe fire. Say what, you can How to train your dragon. How to train your dragon. So I think there was a movie about this. That's right. They made a lot. Um, but he can actually learn how to breathe in, breathe out without flaming. Right. A deflamed breath out. <laughs> well, that's very important. It's really important mm -hmm. how to breathe out without burning fire out. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is called play therapy of the mind. Play therapy of the soul. Okay? When you're little pumpkins, you do it out here. When you're bigger pumpkins, you do it in here. The brain states, the feeling states are the same. You can do play therapy with adults. You do it all the time. You do it in your mind. This is just a cue, a stimulus, an outer stimulus. <laughs> 
for kids because there's the differentiation between the magic mind, the outer world, and, and the inner is much more fluid, well, or differentiation is less, and the boundary is much more fluid because, why because? Yeah, pref they don't have as much prefrontal cortex, right? There isn't all that pruning and myelination of prefrontal. They're in magic mind. They're in orbital frontal, right mode, limbic, all that. So this is very real. The, the boundaries, I told you when I was a little kid, I remember looking at this cowboy figure, and it felt like I was on the, a Navajo on the plains riding, and it really felt as if it was real. Remember the article with the, um, where the kid sees a whale or something on the screen, an avatar? of them and, and swimming, and it feels as if they, they start to believe they actually swam with the whale, that boundary. Well, when you're an adult, you got all of this. So you have to kind of move that aside a little bit, work with that, and now it's all in your mind. But we looked at your dad an fMRI of your brain and your body when you were flying with a dragon. Oh, you're there. And notice, by the way, you don't have to Tighten your toes, loosen your toes. Tighten your calves, loosen. Nothing wrong with all that, but you know, that kind of deep meditative clothes. I mean, all that's wonderful, you know, and that's fine. You don't have to do any of that. You just go, see the dragon. You seen the dragon? She didn't even close your eyes. I close my eyes. I need a little to kind of see the dragon. You're doing. You know, you just there. You can dual screen it. It's kind of like Google lenses. You're over on the side here, doing this, and you can still be here. Okay? Very powerful. You never, I never realized Iron Man got left out. Would you like to put him in? I kind of do. Then is that okay? Can you put Iron Man in? He's here. He's the only superhero. Okay. okay. Now he's there. Now he's ah, superhero. Very good. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. All right. You felt this, right? Yeah. No, I think he's right. He's like a baby superhero. Uh, he's in, he's in training. We're deciding. Is that why they left him out? Because he's too little. Baby. He's a little. Ex yeah, he's too small. He's little. Yeah. Nice. Superman, you're like, don't steroids, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Iron Man. Hey, watch it, baby. Don't give away my secret. No. Right, okay, so so what is so you're seeing Iron Man? What's Iron Man got yeah. to say to you? Uh, oh, you don't have to. I'm sorry. I just go back. He's going okay, to there. you're very empathic. He, but he appreciates that you put him in. Yeah, okay. he just felt left out. <laughs> very good. Okay, perfect. I and actually didn't notice right? the butterfly until you pointed it out. I didn't okay. even see it. It was like it wasn't even there. Not okay. even in the box. But oh, interesting. After it was pointed out, yeah, it was. It seemed like it was sort of like this peacemaker, like. Let's not fight. And it's in the center of the box. And okay. It's Let's not fight. It's the peacemaker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And there's also clicks. There's clicks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How, so talk about that. Which um, clicks? Just, just like the superhero group. Okay. But like home. Let's sit with us. You know, here's a home, here's a home, here's a war. Okay. <laughs> well, we've, we've got our yeah. peace negotiator yeah. there. Communicate <laughs> war. Correct. And which is quite now, generalized. Exactly. Yeah. Typically, it's just a misunderstanding. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And now we've clarified. Yeah. And then we have our peaceful beach hideaway, getaway place. Okay. Where everyone vacations. Well, only if they're allowed. Get remember, it's an oasis. We've got the two. Managers of the Oasis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, what did you say, Miss? No, I just said I'm analyzing myself now and my reaction. So you do you want to share any of that or not? Well, no, I feel like I've talked a lot already. But just with the wizard, I think that part of my reaction of trying to like be him and understanding is that I was the one that put the army guys. So now I'm like, oh, oh wait, is there a thing there now? Uh -huh. Oh, you feel bad about, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Maybe I feel okay. bad. Okay, the aggression and whatnot. Guilt, shame. Hell, do I shame all the shame? I'm moving into shame past guilt. But there's but reconciliation, so there's no humiliation. That's exa very good. That's exactly right. You put it back together, you've been able, in fact, now you're writing the dragon. More Catholic. That's beautiful. Right. Okay, we're good? Mm -hmm. Right. Back to your seats. I'm going to, I'm going to move that camera. Powerful, good, and strong. Beautiful, defenseless, feminine. Cute, small, shy, observant, um, evil, wizardly, mysterious, yeah, strong, awkward, curious, earthly, natural-minded. We have working together to protect the area, collaborative, 
cozy, comfortable shelter. Confident, successful, strong, uh, capable. Do you notice about the themes? Strength. Strength. There's a lot about strength. There's a lot about trying to be powerful. There's a lot about protection. There's a lot about protection. And there's something about also nature and um, earthy. There's also the feminine and the soft. And it was cute and playful. Uh -huh. Okay. We are the life force power of the universe. And you guys got to see that Jill Bolt Taylor video I saw. Have you seen that before? Do you know about that one? Yeah, it's famous. It has like 10 million views or something. Please look at it. She was a neuroscientist, there is, and she had a stroke. So her prefrontal cortex, left brain, was pretty much offline. And she went into this journey. She was still very cognizant. But the unthought known, she couldn't put it in the verbal until it reconnected. You have a comment. Question. Um, is there a projected test that you can answer in? I'm sorry, wait, what? Is there a projected test, like a, they can, yeah, like projected test that uses the answer as part of the... Uh, there have been various people who have set up scoring systems. For, in Michigan State, we did an MA and then a PhD rather than do orals and all that. But of, or the, the, those mid midterm things. So I actually did a very obsessive uh, measuring system, but none that's standardized by the standards you now would have, as, as far as I know. Actually, let's talk about Samwell. So Samwell was actually developed by this woman named Margaret Lowenfeld way back in kind of the earlier 1900s, something like that, 1930s, 40s. And she read a book called Floor Games, H.G. Wells actually, and it was about kids you know, playing on the floor with objects. So she started with that, and then a bunch of other people took it over. And for some reason, well, I know why, but Jungians, like, it's our technique. Because you immediately move into the magic mind. You, you can't help yourself. You cannot pick up an object and put it and not go into that part. I mean, if we had fMRIs, and I don't know if there's been any studies doing fMRIs while people are doing sand world, but um, I guess they do have portable like that. But you, so it's a very symbolic mode of reality. And if nothing else, remember I told you one of the joys of play therapy is every object in some sense represents an aspect of yourself. And all you got to do is say three adjectives and you're describing an aspect of yourself. You're the one who's feminine and intuitive and kind. You're the one who's strong and daring and protective. You're the one who can be evil or wicked. It's all you. That's the whole point. It's all you. And this accesses it very quickly. So Doris Koff became a biggie in this. And she had, she actually lived in the Black Forest in Germany. And she has, there's a picture of her little office. It's like this little hut. Can you imagine a little hut in the Black Forest in Germany? And she's got thousands of sand world figures all around. And she has what's called a dry tray. And she has a wet tray. In the wet tray, you can add water and all that. The problem is it gets all mucky. And she allows a kid to do anything. A kid wants to burn a figure and all that. Part of the process. Burn the figure. Look for the fire extinguisher. Smoke alarms. Um, the first thing I do in a custody eval when I first see the children or child is I, ha I see them with the parents and child together. And I have them do a sand world together. That's the first thing I do. They come in the office, and I show them the sand world. Again, I have this big, um, nicely made wooden tray. It's about three quarters the size of this table. It has drawers under it. People drawer, animal drawer things drawer, big things that don't fit in the other drawer, drawer. And I say, create a scene in the sand. It is so heartening to me. You already know my feelings, my ambivalent feelings about screens and where it's all going, that the most compelling thing generally in my office still is sand 
And the kids come in, they go, oh, what's that? And before you know it, they're like, there they are, magic minding, magic minding, magic minding. Myelinate, myelinate, myelinate. Create self, create self. Immersed in self-creation. And it's a marvelously comfortable way for families and for kids to first kind of go into this office. They kind of know, custody of Al, whether I'm going to live with mom or dad, more and all that. And boom, there they are doing this. I have a coding system. And I sit and I code their behaviors. Actually, I presented at the workshop that they do, the yearly workshop, this coding system. And actually, Neil Ribner says we ought to normal, I mean, you know, normalize it, make it norm, because it's not norm. So if anybody wants to take this coding system of interaction and normalize it, power to you, you and have it. Um, I do ask them, who or what would the child, who or what would they be? Whose mom? Who, I'll first ask the parent that's brought them. Obviously, I do the same thing with each parent, obviously. So if it's mom, where's mom in this? Siblings. If it's a step-parent, where's the step-parent? I will also ask at the end, where the, where's dad, where's the other parent? Sometimes kids say extremely interesting things. So, example, I was doing, um, dad's in Hawaii, mom is here, kid goes, to Hawaii for summer vacation, comes back, definitely wants to live with dad. It's custody of Al. Kid comes in with mom and sets up a world where he takes all the tanks and all the soldiers, and that's his side, and he puts mom in this little like Jeep. She has a soldier or two, that's her side. And he says, all right, let's have a war. And she's like, oh, um, but can't we have, and she actually took this little bird, can't we have a little peace between us? What happened next? Just killed it. Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah, fighter planes, blah, 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 blah. Immediately. Buried it. I'll never forget the back. I was watching Carol from the side, looked at the back of her neck, bright red. Oh. When he, dad came from Hawaii with his family and whatnot, he had some kids with a new wife. And they did this whole scene, this kind of farming scene of all of them together and whatnot. Now, obviously, you're not going to base a whole custody recommendation on one sand or two sand worlds. But all the other data kind of fell in place also. It was a very conflicted, very difficult relationship between him and his mom. And he really felt very secure in his relationship with his dad and that family. So it's a compelling little piece of data in the report and or when you have to give testimony. And everybody kind of intuitively gets it, as long as the other stuff lines up. I've had it where, I had one, where the kids put, and the, dad's there and the kid's there and they put dad on an island and they are the crocodiles. They're climbing up on the island from the water and they're going to eat dad up. I mean, the good news is they felt safe enough around their dad that they could do that kind of world. Very powerful. Have you guys done worlds at separate from out of here? Yes. And no, not many. Okay. Again, it's kind of a subculture, even of the union folk, and they treasure their objects. And for the ones that are very serious about, it, you walk in the office, and it's just lines and lines of these incredible figures. And you can get them online. You can get them in stores. But there's some that specialize, and like the princess. She came from an online store that's specific to send trace. Okay. Okay. Jung. You guys read Jung, studied Jung? Do you know much of anything about Jung? Not really, kind of a little bit? Okay. Wait, why is that princess different than other princesses in the stores? Oh, look how beautifully she's made. Oh, okay. Tremendous detail. Again, that's kind of mean. They take a lot of pride in that. She was, by the way, about 20 bucks. And she was probably, well, actually, she's a cake cut thing. She was probably a buck, if even. Kids don't, I don't believe it makes that much difference to a kid. I mean, it's pretty, she's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this is not good. Where's the other one? Where's my, ah. Jung, here we go. Here comes the haiku model of Jung. So Jung, don't forget, Jung is at least 90% Freud. Jung was Freud's heir apparent. 
Okay, he was, this is conscious mind, what we call conscious, aware, hello, I'm Yanal Balkani. Unconscious, as you know, I call it non-conscious or non-verbally conscious mind. But certainly in those days they call it the unconscious. He divides up the unconscious with the personal and the transpersonal. Again, Jung, Freud's heir apparent. I don't know if you know that Freud actually gave out rings to his, there were like eight of them, Reich, uh, there's eight, very eight that were in the group, the cabal, and he gave them all rings. But Jung was his special one. There's all kinds of stories about the two of them together. One time Freud fainted when Jung walked in the room, and I mean, just all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, those guys are pretty out there. Jung came into a crisis when he no longer believed that it was really just about SNA. It just really wasn't that for him. In fact, what does sex symbolize? What does aggression symbolize? It's like Freud didn't go far enough for him in that sense. So it was a big deal for him to break up with Siggy. It was huge. And actually, Freud asked for his ring back. This diamond ring doesn't shine for me anymore. And he did. He had to give him back his ring. And the main thing that he came into is this whole issue of the transpersonal. And the ego, as he would call it, is kind of lives in both worlds. There's a non-conscious component and there's a conscious component of the ego. Transpersonal. So the personal unconscious, very much like Freud's, and you can, it has a part that's non-conscious and then of course it's a part that's subconscious. And remember we accessed our subconscious last week? When I asked you who you had your first crush on? Allison. <laughs> Subconscious. Because Jung would immediately think, oh, Allison is a representation of some aspect of yourself. There's, there's another layer, and that layer gets into the transpersonal. So the transpersonal aspect of our unconscious is the transhistorical, transcultural, transpersonal aspects, and they're personified by what we call, or he calls, archetypes. We'll get to that in a moment. There is a relationship between this non-conscious part and this conscious part. And it is a homeostatic system that's seeking to achieve, I know I'm using you a lot today, Emma, the word you said early in the club. Remember when you first said that word? And I said, oh, remember that word. Do you remember what the word was? No. Balance. Yeah. If I could put Jung into one word, Jung in one word, balance. It's all about balance. Balancing aspects of self. That's what homeostasis is. So the non-conscious, as they call it unconscious, is trying to communicate with the conscious to tell it what it needs to do in order to stay balanced. That's why I had you, you know, the wizard, what, is, what advice does the wizard have for you? What, I forgot, the, the, what, the, you had some good advice from yours. Uh, mine was to be more Oh yeah, present. Right, right. So that would be a perfect example of the non-conscious, which you then can access by moving into that zone through this symbol, and it gives you a guidance. And it says, hey, you got a marvelous sharp head and mindfulness. Be here now, too. And be earthy and be grounded in actual, you know, go take a nature walk, for God's sakes. Go walk on that beach. You want to be, don't just see it in the sand here. Go to the beach. It's a must. You need to do that would be your inner wise one. Okay? This is a very, very different assumption. Not right, wrongs, because it's all right. Then Siggy and that group. Very different assumption about what symbols are. So this non-conscious part speaks through symbols. And there's personal symbols, and there's these transpersonal archetypal symbols. The goal is to keep you balanced. 
If you don't pay attention, the symbols are going to get louder. I told you that with humanism. If you don't follow your heart, you're going to have symptoms. So you'll have a nightmare. Let's say you don't pay attention. So you have this nightmare. Maybe you're, I don't know what it would be. Maybe you're in a library and you're reading books and books, or, and then it just all comes falling down on you or something. Or maybe you have the opposite. You're on a beach and you're walking and you feel so blissful. It's saying, come on, come on. In fact, it's so powerful that you wake up and you do go to the beach. Let's go surfing now. If you play <laughs> it pulls you or it warns you, saying, cut it out. You get somatic symptoms. You get depressed. You get anxious. All that it would say symptoms in that sense are the last gasp of the psyche saying, come on, pay attention. I'm trying to tell you something here. You're disbalanced. Okay. When you're really not paying attention, you're, gonna, you're now hitting archetypal themes. Archetypes are the transpersonal, transhistorical, transcultural symbols of the human condition, what it is to be human. By the way, notice how as a group, if we looked at those traits and qualities that we're being spoken to, I dare say you need to feel more power in life. You feel probably not very powerful at times and ways. And you're not connecting to the world enough, perhaps, maybe. And you're not feeling nurtured enough. And you're not feeling, I will say, oftentimes, and I've done this with every class since 1984, there'll be a lot of themes about nature and nurture. And a lot of things about, you know, trees. Because you don't get to do a lot. You're very, very busy in your life. And you're very narrowed in the busyness that you have to do. And you do class stuff, and then you go do uh, internship stuff, and you're really inundated. You don't have a lot of time to be out in nature and the world and to ride dragons. And so your psyche longs for home, longs for a safe and sheltered space, your own little castle. And it does. It speaks to it. So transpersonal, transhistorical symbols are, and I love this line, for Jung, symbols are bridges cast to unseen shores. Bridges cast to unseen shores. Because a symbol, by definition, is not something of your prefrontal cortex knowable mind. Because once it you in, that's why you don't interpret a symbol. You expand a symbol. You relate to a symbol. You don't interpret it. I did not interpret anything up here. All I did was try and find ways that you could more fully relate to, expand, whatever the symbol was for you. And that's the role of the therapist. I am a co-guide in this endeavor with you. And so I ask certain questions. Yes, I ask questions, and you're adults. I'll ask questions, and I'll even make some implications. I'll make some suggestions that maybe the, drag, maybe the wizard would do this or that. The good news is, you'll, if I'm not on target, you'll go, no. Okay. Hi, Carl, I'm home. Nobody's home. Nobody's home. I'll, I'll back off. But you are a co-guide. Just like in play therapy, you can, oh, and, oh, and the dog's going to go over here. I'm looking at the kids with that. Okay. I've added to the tune if it fits for him, because I'm being intuitive. Bimonic. So it's the questions you ask, but the, the role, the intent is to expand so that that symbol, that aspect of self that needs to be heard can have a voice in your life. So you relate to symbols. I told you, I've been drawing this wave. Since I was 13, it's like a visual mantra to me. It was on all my binders everywhere. Well, now it's on my wedding ring for the last 25 years. It's the most powerful symbol in my life. Every time I drive up Torrey Pines, I can't help myself but to look down and see what the waves are like. When I walk uh, uh, on Chelsea and I turn around and there's Forward Street and there's the ocean, I, I am compelled to look. I'm compelled when I drive by to look at my rearview mirror. I told you one time I backed into somebody because what I was doing, I was looking at the wave. It is such a compelling symbol to me. What do you imagine? My, remember I was in analysis on the couch? What do you imagine? 
the analyst said to me, in interpreting my, the wave and surfing, what do you th I would say what? Your mother? You betcha. What part of my mother? No, 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 no. Think about it. It's a tube. I'm getting tubed. Uh, Absolutely. It's the womb, vagina. What's the surfboard? Your penis. Of course. It's my penis. I mean, come on. This is obvious, isn't it? So I'm fucking my mother. <laughs> right? I, penis, right? Surfboard in the tube. Right? Three days ago, two days ago, I was all alone. South Bird. Just me, my boy, and little tiny. The reason I was alone is about this big. Ziggy's is this inside little wave. And I just sat there and I just put my little hand in that wave. I was as near to Nirvana as I'm going to get. Bliss. Just. <laughs> Nobody left. I kicked out. Ah. That's all I need. Just give me one little. <laughs> and I just and I looked at my hand, just like. <laughs> and I put two hands in one in a different way. Like. Ah. It doesn't feel like I'm fucking my mother. I'm sorry. That's just not the vibe I get from it. Now, maybe I'm being defensive, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying, I know I seem to be picking on psyche. I'm still picking on my analyst. Now, I'm not saying that that couldn't be some deep primordial association. Because Jung would say, well, that's interesting. What does fucking your mother mean? Because what does your mother symbolize? What does the penis symbolize? Why stop at anatomy, dude? What does that actually mean? Power, being nurtured, and I mean, you can go with that. I don't know what it means, but what matters to me is I have, it has mana, it has this energy, it has this magic. So I live as close to that ocean as I can at all times. And yeah, I can go on vacations, and but it, it come, always comes back to a, a center. That's mana, that's relating to the symbol, not interpreting it. Because when you interpret a symbol, what you've basically done is turn it into a sign. Oh, I get it, surfboard equals penis. Oh, okay. So. Dispense with surfboard, just say, just walk around with your phallus. Or make your board look like a dick. I don't know, I mean, <laughs> the whole point of it is, it's not, that's what a symbol is, that's why it's to an unseen shore. It's a bridge to an unseen shore. So you gotta walk on that bridge. And as you walk on that bridge, that shore might get clearer and clearer. And maybe eventually, it doesn't carry that same mana. I used to have a big thing about seals. I still love seals, still if I was going to be an animal, I'd be a seal. But I used to have them kind of all over. It doesn't have the same mana. Don't need a seal all over the place. Okay, you getting kind of a sense of this? Who had archetypes down? Who has archetypes down to a multi-billion dollar business? Actually, several of them. Star Wars. <laughs> you said them both, exactly. Disney has archetypes down. Oh my God. Because what archetypes do we have? Well, one, we'll just kind of listen and then we'll expand. We have a hero archetype, right? We have a shadow archetype. We have the good mom archetype. Yeah. And the wise father archetype. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We have the anima Anima, we'll talk about these. Animus archetype, feminine aspect of the male, the male aspect of the woman, whatever. So for those of you not in class and watching the tape, I don't know where this ended and where it begins, but it begins now again. Um, I just had the class, and actually I want you to do this at home. Draw the mask of, first that famous deity from Nukhinikotank, Kanamanakiki. Then turn page over, do the mask of that other famous deity from the Isles of Nuktink, Karuna. Thank you. So for those of you who are you're looking at, well, I guess you've done it and yeah. now you're looking. That's okay. <laughs> um, turn them in. Please, thank you. You are not going to be graded. <laughs> and an orange, wow. The gift, I said my gift. The local fruit. Oh, did you, did you, did you write? Yeah, the local fruit, very good. You wrote which is? Names on ours? No, 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 you don't need to write your name. No, no, no. But just to that, please identify at least one of the masks so I know which one is which. I just put one and two. Say what? I just put one and two. Oh, okay. So one is kind of. Okay. I put it also on there. Okay, that's great. Oh, 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 also, I'm so sorry. What are they the deities of? What are the deities of? So sorry. What are the deities of? Yeah. What are they the deities of? Okay, perfect. 
which is which, and you'll write it down, please. Of course. Ah, yes, perfect. Just feel and feel how it comes from a place you don't, you can't really consciously make happen. It just comes. Just like that Sam world, and you did, you just comes to you. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you've barked and meowed in this class. You've drawn the man kind of on a kiki. Try to be experiential. You experience the class. Yeah. Fantastic. By the way, an obvious footnote on sand worlds, you don't typically put away a sand world in front of the kid. Mm. Kind of like taking a drawing and erasing it in front of them. Some will ask, can you leave it? Can you leave it? I say, I'm so glad that you love it that much that you want to leave it. Unfortunately, other kids use it. And I look at the kid, and sometimes they're like, oh, no big. And sometimes they're like, I know, it's so disappointing. But what I do do, again, the wonders of the positive side of these lovely screen little gizzies, in my little that app, is I take a picture of it. In fact, I take a picture of a lot of what the kids do. And I just keep it in their file, that same one where I took the little notes on. And sometimes, I think I might have told you, there was a girl who I saw at age seven, and she came back at 14, specifically because she wanted to do the sand world she did when she was seven. She wanted to do the exact sand world. So I had a picture. So we did the exact sand world. By the way, I saw yesterday, just out of blue, emailed me, somebody I saw at age seven, who's now 31 years old. Oh, it was very cool. I came in, oh my God, you're a man with a beard. Holy schnoli. I remember you, lad. Is this little... What was cool was he was describing life situations, and I said, I remember you at seven. I rem and I do. I remember how spunky you were. I remember how you wanted, I don't usually have Legos. I happen to have Legos in that day. And he made this Lego, and how important it was for him that he made it, not me. And that's fine, but he didn't, you know, because he was having a hard time today. I said, I remember all of that. You were so spunky, and it was so important to you to be autonomous and independent, positive agency. And the irony, or whatever, is that's exactly the dilemma he's in now, mm -hmm. is somebody else is trying to build the Legos that he wants to build, metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was like, dude, I got, he's like, yeah, exactly. I said, and it was like, cool, that's cool. And I haven't seen him in all these years. Okay. Now, I have no idea where this ended. So, I, I have no, so quick to review. Again, Jung is all about, what's Jung all about? Balance. What are we balancing? Unconscious, I call non-verbally conscious areas of mind, brain, soul, psyche, whatever, and the conscious. By the way, what Jung added was another S word. The spiritual. Religious people, by the way, love Jung. Because he's all about spiritual things. I will say, the guy was quite the scholar. I mean, he read things in the original Latin. He read them in the original Greek and all that stuff. There was a nice BBC biography movie on him, actually. He actually built this, like, castle thing. And he had a journal, of course. He was all about writing. And the first, he was actually a good artist, drawer. The first page of his journal is this real evil looking figure kind of on the entrance of a mine shaft. That would, that would represent what archetype? The shadow. The dark shadow. That you have to get through the shadow. You have to get through the shadow, by the way, to really own who you are. It was interesting. Talk about balance. In these sand worlds, they usually start out really kind of Bambi meets Godzilla. They really start out really nice, sweet, and everything's positive. And it gets to a point where it doesn't feel right. So somebody always puts in an evil aspect. And whether it's, and I have, you know, I have sharks, I have some evil aspects. By the way, that's another great, ready for the other great shadow figure? I could do this sound, well, at least 10 years ago, I could have done this sound anywhere in the world. Do you know what sound I'm going to do? Dun, 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 dun. Jaws. Jaws. What a fantastic shadow figure. Where? Under the ocean. 
By the way, ocean in this cosmology is kind of a symbol of self. So while it may also be true that part of me, I'm fucking my mom when I'm surfing with that board, phallic board and that tubey wave. Another way to look at it perhaps maybe is the ocean is self. It's a vast, amazing power that we can connect with. So surf it becomes ego, but never control, but you can have this relationship with it. And I gotta tell you, when you kick out of a wave, you feel that power of what is going through you. Don't forget, wave is wind birthing itself in liquid form. You know that. The water doesn't move. You know that, right? The water just, the water just rises in sequence. It's amazing to think about. That's why when you're sitting outside on your board, you don't go in. You just bobble up and down until it gets to the point where it breaks. Then the water actually moves. That's that energy from the storm thousands of miles away. And that ends up in your body. Wow, it's unbelievable, that feeling. Riding piggyback on the universe, cradle in the arms of God, whatever that might mean. So a wave archetype of a whole other thing, perhaps, maybe. So you got this balance. It's a dialogue. Symbols are, come on, wasn't that long ago, bridges cast to unseen shores. It's the way this non-conscious part talks to you, tries to be a homeostatic, balancing, compensatory. It fills in the blank of what your conscious mind needs to know, but isn't paying attention. An unaddressed dream, in a way, is like an envelope you never opened. The unconscious, non-conscious, send you a letter. Hey, hello, and you ignored it. Well, now it's a package, still ignored it. Well, come on, pay attention. Because I want to tell you something. That's a very, very different way of looking at symbols. And again, it has this mana. I will never know what a wave really means. I can say, well, maybe it's the ocean. I don't know, as long as it has that energy. But it matters. It's important. It's a sign. So you live with symbols. You don't interpret them. When you interpret a symbol, what do you make it into? A sign. Wave represents womb, whatever. Might also be true. It doesn't have mana. OK. So you have the, the personal, you have your own personal mom, your own personal shadow, and then since there is this commonality of the human condition, we were all born to a mom, we all had caregivers, we all born into a society, we all have certain developmental tasks. Those are all encapsulated in what we call archetypes. Transpersonal, transhistorical, transcultural, psycho, neuro, bio, endocrine, logical, whatever you want to add to that template of the human condition. It's a template. So it's the form, not the contact. So like I was saying, there we were in that land far, far away with the dying king. We can't just leave him there. The dying king, right? We had those two evil sisters. And then we had the lovely, wonderful sister. And they got to bring the yellow flower back so that the kingdom, which will become a princess dumb, can survive and flourish. And off they go on their journey, right? And of course, they go in different ways. Oh my God. You know what that innocent, wonderful one's going to go through. Oh my God, the travails. She's going to face dragons and evil ones and mean ones and wicked people and torrential rains and rain, just like, oh God. And finally, after all of that, and when she's about to give up, and it's just in the mud and the muck, and some little creature or something suddenly helps her. Right? Are we with me on this or something? You can have your own version. It doesn't matter. The content can be different. The form's the same. And just when she's about to, like, that's it. Give up. I can't do it. And maybe she has a vision of her dad or something. Mm -hmm. Simba! In the stars. Simba! Great archetype. Father archetype. She's at a, I don't know, where is she at? A meadow? Where is she suddenly? Cyber. So where by a brook. And guess what's right there by that brook? <gasps> yes, the magical yellow flower's there. I swear to God, I'm getting goosebumps. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And she's like, oh, and that kind of gives her strength. And she drinks from the brook. And of course, it's got some magic power there too. She's like, yeah, she's refortified and all that. And she gets the flower and she starts to head back. What happens next? What do you think happens next? You know exactly what's going to happen next. You bet you those sisters are going to come. <laughs> By the way, this would have happened next 
3,000 years ago in some island somewhere where that little Kanamanakiki or whatever, or Karuna, this story would have been told. It's just different features, but the same concept. Yeah, the sisters, they're going to come, ha, ha, ha. They haven't worked with shit, man. They just not. They haven't done anything. Nada. Have the nails painted. Now, of course, they grab the flower. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and off they go. They're going to go faster. Now, we can have all kinds of variations, but you know what happens in the end. What happens in the end? Magical misunderstood dragon comes. <laughs> oh, of course, right from there. That's why he was here in the first place. Hey, don't forget me. Yes, she does. She hops on him. Woo! <laughs> Obviously, now, we could have a zillion, pardon me, variation. I'm getting choked up about this story. No. <laughs> variations of how she somehow gets the, what does she get back? Nothing. Of course she gets back the flower. Of course she does. And she comes to her father. And he's still alive. <laughs> barely. He's barely alive. Come on. But he is alive. Because he's waiting. He's hung. He puts his hand out. <gasps> and she puts the flower in his hand and looks at it and goes, Oh, I knew you would, but just give me your hand. Because that's more important. He wants the human contact with his daughter that he loves. Right? But the flower's there. And the kingdom, or queen, princess dumb, right, is now going to flourish and survive. And look at your cheeks, man. Your rosy cheeks. You're happy. Yes. So what should we do with the evil sister thing? Half stepsisters, half sisters, whatever they are. Half sisters is what they are, really. What should we do with them? Off with their heads. Really that bad? <laughs> we could do that. In the old fairy tales, it was off with the heads. It was really dark. The dragon, uh, See, I'm thinking about the dragon's going to Oh, is the dragon flaming them? Yeah, I think so. Oh, really? Oh, you got him off with the heads. He flames them. <laughs> See, I'm thinking maybe they have to like clean up the dragon poop and take care of the dragon. And then they eventually transform. But that's, you know, the humanistic side of me. <laughs> See, because I, I have to integrate more of my shadow. Yeah! Cut off their heads and then burn them. Or burn them and cut off their heads both at the same time. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> That story will be told 3,000 years from now. It will be told because it's archetypal, transpersonal, transhistorical, transcultural. It's a template of human conditions. And we've got ourselves that hero. And you better be in contact with your hero because we need our heroes. And again, when you stand in front of that committee, when you finally do your PhD, down to make the law, down to make the law. Three and five out. Presentation to get your PhD. Talk to your doctor. Your hero is going to come out. You're going to like, I have some things to say here. It's really important to be in contact with our hero. It represents our strengths. It represents our ideals of who we want to be. So back to then the shadow. So there's the dark shadow. Quick way to get in contact with your shadow. Well, first of all, anything that really, any personality trait or quality or something that you just hate. Oh, that person's so, ew. Sorry, that means that's some unintegrated aspect of your own shadow. Put it in neuropsych. It's an limbic thing and it hasn't fully come through the prefrontal and been like, okay, I get this, I get that, I can move on. You haven't accepted it yet. It's part of you. Here's another one. So take the three traits you most admire, most respect. Somebody give me a trait that they really admire. Like, yeah, love this trait. Honesty. Honesty. Perfect. Compassion, of course. Be compassionate and resonative and okay. Give me another one. Loyalty. Loyalty. Devoted. Loyal. That's a good one. I like creativity. Thinking outside the box. Remember that one was I have the, the, the yeah, with that monkey. <laughs> Bad. And the, the monkey beater, or it doesn't beat, he beats others with monkeys. Well, it's thinking outside the box. Okay, I'll go for the creativity. Somebody, another trait. Passionate. Passionate. Love that. Passionate. Uh, I don't know. That's all right. Creativity. I don't know. Somebody else. Give them up. So passion is good. Funny. Funny. Being funny. Humorous. Okay. All right. I usually have three. So what? So I have compassion, creativity. Yeah, I like, I like courage. Oh, yeah, I like courage. Oh, yeah, I told you, to, to take loving, responsible, respectful, carry yourself. Loving, responsible, respectful, carry yourself takes an enormous amount of courage. So I like courage a lot. Okay? 
So now, how are we going to get to the shadow out of that? The Yasune. What is that? I guess it's Plato. No, Socratic. That's a Socratic way of teaching. What do you think? How do we get there? We reverse it and take the exact extreme opposite. So compassion, cold, calculated cruelty would be the opposite of that. Which, what did you, which one did you say? Oh, on, honesty. So devious, lying, Mwah! nefariously, pernicious. God, I haven't used that word for a ton and beyond. I learned it for the GREs, of course. My vocabulary just went, it was one of those learning curves. It's weird. Uh, what was yours? Yours was loyalty and devotion? Oh, betrayal, man. Oh, yeah. By the way, betrayal is a really interesting thing. If we, again, if we think about, well, just on the side, what's a new window? That's what this is. Yeah, we're now minimizing this window, putting this just for a second, because betrayal is really interesting. It's a combination of two things. One is, it's the whole thing about disconnecting. When you thought you were connected, you know, your wife screws on you, whatever it is. Oh, my God. So one is that disconnection, but the other is it's unfair. It's unpredictable. Remember that whole mountain of bananas? This isn't fair. So it hits both of those at once. Oh, no wonder people kill out of, you betrayed me in jealousy, and then they kill the person. And in France, you're parade around the streets in the small village if you did it, supposedly. I don't know what's true. Enough. But anyway, but, all right, so that's the shadow of that. What would I say? Creativity? Oh, so never, never dare to go outside the box. Oh, no, just Mr. Conformist. We'll do exactly what we're supposed to do now. Tell me what to do. I'll do it exactly that way, because I don't want to think anything outside of that. Oh, I am getting a little... I can feel a little shadow feeling that, like, come on, man. Because I realize it's hitting even the more important thing for me, courage. So what's the, what's the flip side of courage? <laughs> I'm a wimp. Oh, no. I'm a wimp. <laughs> <laughs> All no, that's the feeling when you connect with your shadow, disgust. It's like disgust. It's a very primitive feeling. Ah, oh, that's disgusting. One of the things I love about karate it really, it's amazing, because it really brings up my inner wimp and my inner warrior. By the way, really important. Jung is all, is Hegelian, not that I ever read Hegel, okay? I didn't. But I know Hegel's about opposites. It's all about opposites. It's about yings and yangs. Jung is all about the opposites and integrating the opposites. So wimp and warrior, perfect dichotomies. And, and that's with the shadow, that's why that works in terms of what you most admire. Well, flip it, that's going to be the shadow side, and it'll be part of you also. And karate, I don't like to get hurt. And my teacher, Sabanim, he sometimes when he, he shows something, he actually, ow, that hurt. So I wince a little, and he'll, you know, and he's not, he verbally spars with you too. He's not the real humanistic, compassionate, value value, not at all. He's like, what, you scared? And I go, part of me is. The inner wimp is coming out, man. You're going to hit? But also my warrior comes out. When I face those three boards that I have to break, three boards about this much wood? Oh, talk about the hero. Yeah. Bam! And they go through. Oh, my God. It's an unbelievable feeling. What's amazing, I remember that three board. And everybody's watching, but you just zone. You're just you in that wood. One of the worst feelings is thud. Oh, it bounces off. It's like, oh, the wimp. But then the hero comes back out, the courageous one. I'm going to do this. And that was the last time I actually had to break. And then it goes right through. I did it right. Something just went right through. Ah! And it just went through like a knife through butter, as they say. And I brought home, honey, here are six boards. Because <laughs> breaking out for the fireplace. Your hero is home. <laughs> All right, come on. There's a hero inside of you, connect with that courage. But the flip side is the wimp. We all have the wimp. It's okay. Okay, what was the other trait? There's some other traits that you loved. Compassionate. Compassionate. Oh, so that's the same. That's why well, I say compassionate. No, you... Just passionate. Oh, just passionate, right. Not, I had to come. No, passion is great. I love that. Having so, so like being ahedonic. You know, just like, yeah, nothing interests you. Dull. Dull. Boring. <sighs> Stygian. Another GRE word. Man, they're coming back. <laughs> kind of dark. Right, is that still a shadowish thing for you? Does that connect? Yeah, you have feelings about that concept of being, 
Yeah, okay. You getting this? So would this study argue that everyone has everything? Yes. Okay. Remember my little assumption about the united brain states of you? If I ever wrote a little quick book, it's one of those get to it when I get the round to it. I'm going to write a little online book about the united brain states of you and the inner president and all the different parts, right? And the big part is the Def part of the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. We're going to get to that persona as a good part. It's all of you. But who's in charge? And they, right now, it's your inner student. It's your inner scholar. It's your inner curious one. It's all kinds of things. That's who's in charge right now. That's who needs to be in charge right now. That's cool. So to put it in more archetypal or mythical ways, it's these huge hum humanic, it's not really a word, it should be, humanic themes that's part of the substrate of the species. So Jung is actually, in certain ways, biological determinism. Well, not quite determinism. He believes we're like a rose seed. So you take this little seed. I should have a little rose seed, I realize. In the seed already is the whole unfolding potential for the bloom. It's already all there. It's, pre it's coded to be there. In fact, just given the right soil, a little bit of rain or watering, whatever, and sun, it can do no other than to bloom. It, that's what it's programmed to do. It can do no other. But it's got to have the right soil, the right light. The right, oh, I'm sorry, Superman, back up. I'll, I promise I'll put this back up in a moment. I left your world, by the way. I took everything else up in a It can do no other. Well, so Jung believes, we are neurobiologically programmed once the egg and sperm unite. This whole unfolding, this coding is already, in a certain sense, predetermined to unfold towards your bloom, whatever that may be. And he calls this process and that outcome individuation. Individuation. The balancing of all these different aspects of self. All the yins and the yangs. The light and the dark. By the way, archetypes of the light are what we, as human, humanity, is connected to. Archetypes of the dark are what disconnects us from what we're connected to. So that whole thing about connection. So individuation, and by the way, life as he would see it is a spiral, hopefully not a circle. So you come to the same themes at various times in your life. You're never like, okay, I'm individuated now. No, one moment I broke the three boards, I come home, honey, I'm a hero. And then the next moment I do something else, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's that other part to me. But it moves along. And if you're not, if you're in a circle, that's when non-conscious, unconscious says, hey, you're stuck, you're in a circle, come on. You're being grandiose, or you're being too wimpy. Come on, man, we need the hero. Get it up, let's go, let's do this. Okay, goodness. So you as a therapist are an active guide to helping your client connect with their hero, their courage, and accept, in that sense it's very, by the way, this is extremely humanistic. It's kind of be all you can be. Same concept. He got to this, by the way, because there he is in, in 1910 or something. He's Austrian. He's in this mental hospital. And there's this peasant farmer person, floridly psychotic. And he's standing at the end of the hall. This is, I think, in Memory, Dreams, and Reflections, this kind of autobiography book. Standing at the end of the hall, he's looking out this window. And he's talking about the sun spills the seven seeds from, and he goes on and on. And Jung, right in the sound, paying attention, Jung later reads an Egyptian, ancient Egyptian myth, and it's the exact content. And he goes, whoa, there's no way that peasant farmer ever read this myth. It's in the bioplasm of the being, not his term. It's in us. So not only, and by the way, we're going to get eventually some really wooga wooga stuff, but not today. Out of this comes some really wooga wooga stuff. Whether you believe or not, it's a different matter. But so he goes, oh my god, there must be this collective, this thing that's in our bioplasm. So let us imagine. Thank you. Shifting attention over here. Just born, four minutes old, three little goslings. 
Okay, you probably can't see him on camera, that's okay. You can spare that image. <laughs> okay, they're just born, little goslings. Now, as you know, they will imprint to whatever, whomever's first. So now they imprinted me, but that's okay. Let's come back over here. Now, let us imagine this. There's going to be a, like a clothesline from here to the other wall. Okay, just go with me on this. And it's kind of slanted this way. And on that clothesline is a drawing. Uh, how's this go? Of uh, this. Okay. Now set, us, set aside the psychodynamic part. Or accept the psychodynamic part and go, yeah, but it can be more than that. Okay? Okay. I know it's hard to set aside the psychodynamic part, but there it is. Okay, so imagine I cut this shape out. Okay, so now I have the shape. Okay, you're with me, you're with me. Okay, so we got, we got our little clothesline thing. I'm attaching it to the clothesline. Here's the glass, little pumpkins. It's sloping down. I push it. <laughs> Guaranteed, they will chase that. They will chase that little thing. Now, ooh, they're over here. They're looking, beep, 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 beep. Mouth open. Oh, 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 oh. Now we slant it this way. Okay. Same shape. Now I push it that way. Ah, ah, ah. They're all under the desk. I see you're really scared. I know you're frightened. You're afraid you're going to get hurt. And the wimp is. But actually, the wimp is protecting you right now. That's everything about the wimp. It's important to have a wimp sometimes because it protects you, saves your life. Why in the world? What is going on? Aha. Uh -huh. Your curious one wants to have the answer. When you go this way, that looks like a goose. When you go this way, that looks like a hawk, the natural enemy of the gosling. What's the point? The point is, in the bioplasm of the being, of those little gosling, is already an imaginal template. Some might call it an archetype. For the mommy, goody, 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 goody. And for the shadow death, we hawk, yikes, get out of there. And they already have a bioplasmic predetermined response to those very powerful symbols. Getting this? You don't think it's the same for us. You know about epigenesis? Epigenesis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you some articles. You, do you, does anybody know anything about epigenesis? You know about epigenesis? So epigenesis is the impact of the environment on the genome. It changes you. And not only does it change you, more importantly in a way, it changes future generations of you. Wow. Simple example from insect world. So we have these little um, water fleas, and they're smooth surfaced. One gets attacked, but survives. It's a female. Her progeny, and the progeny progenies, we will, they will have um, spiked shell instead of the smooth shell. Their DNA will be identical. But what happens is that experience triggers a, a genome to be activated that otherwise is dormant. So the DNA is the same, but it activates a certain genome. And now we have a very different progeny. And their progeny's progeny. And sometimes it even skips a generation. They did other animal studies where you scare the mom or the dad, because it can be through the testes, um, the, the sperm. Um, gamey, whatever it is. So you scare the dad in some area, two generations down are going to be scared of that same thing, even though they've never had the experience. That's why, by the way, not to keep preaching at you, it's extremely important to take loving, responsible, respectful care of yourself, because it doesn't just affect you. If you're going to have kids, it's going to affect your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, how you live your life. So I'm sorry, it's a moral, ethical imperative for the species to take loving, responsible, respectful care of yourself. Sorry to lay it on you, but there it is. <laughs> but don't worry, you have an unconscious, non-conscious party that will guide you in how to do that. That's the good news, because that's what it's trying to do. And when you get those moments when like, yes, all is balanced, in my language, that's a unimonic state. It's called bliss. You're like at one with, when I was in a little wave thing, in one sense, when I'm really not even thinking about it, I'm just like, yeah, that's unimonic. It's not just within myself, it's within the whole universe, the whole world. Whether it's my mommy, or whether it's myself, or whether it's my cosmos, I am one. That's an awesome state, but it goes away. Good, okay, you can't just blissed out the whole time. You can't just do that the whole time. Okay, so we got the hero, really important. We got the shadow, I said the dark part. 
There's also another part of the shadow. Hello, okay, whatever that part of the shadow was. Thank you for that message. I'm sure I should pay attention. I didn't quite hear it. So you've got five lives, okay? Give us one of them that you might live. Um. And it can be whatever you want, and you will be that. Like a career? Anything, yeah, a, being, a way of being in the world. So one is going to be a psychologist, and the good news is that you're going to have that life. Yeah. <laughs> what would be another life you'd want to have? Um, if chef. You, okay, perfect, chef, fantastic. Obviously, one, one, one of my lives would be like being Dane, I don't want to be Dane Reynolds, but be like Slater or Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Incredible professional, incredible professional surfer. Mm -hmm. Be one of my lives. Well, you've talked a lot today. Who hasn't? Is anybody who hasn't talked? Uh, give, us, give us a life. Give us another life. Perfect. Which, any particular sport? Probably golf. Golf. There you go. Boom. Perfect. Uh, oh, I would definitely be a professional guitarist. I don't need to be, you know, Keith Richards, Rolling Stones, and all that. But there's a guy, Peter Sprague, very respected jazz guitarist. Wonderful, wonderful. I could die. That's one of my lives I could be. Be, a, you know, really respected and all kinds of, playing all kinds of music with all kinds of, oh, I'd love that. that. Boy, I'm moving on that, that'd be really cool. Another life. Uh, I was thinking, like, an athlete. Oh, also an athlete. Cool. Any particular sport? Not baseball. Baseball. Okay, perfect. Another life. Uh, a singer, professional. Perfect. Of course. I was going to say, somebody isn't somebody going to be singing? Forest Ranger. So what I always wanted to be when I was a little kid. And my mom grew up in Yosemite, actually. The, Sol the, the Muir Trail should have been the Solomon's Trail. My grandfather actually showed Muir that trail. But Solomon's was a Jewish name. The Sierra Club was not about to name it the Solomon's Trail. Hey, I'm not dissing Muir. Muir did a lot and all that other stuff and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so it's not a, again, thank you, the psychodynamic, and thank you, analyst. I'm sure there's some piece of my mom in that. And I used to go to the forest and blah, blah. Some other life. A what? Detective. Oh, wow. Fantastic. CSI or whatever. Of that kind of, what kind of, yeah. Forensic detective. Fantastic. Give us a lot. Own a bakery. Perfect. Who was it that wants to be the chef? Right. So you guys can, you know, you can help each other out. Right. Do you have another one? Traveler. Oh, traveler. Just so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Gypsy, like, traveling the world. Uh, oh, you know, one of my lives on that? Multi-billionaire? Not beca because I think, oh, man, how cool would it be? Like what Bill Gates is doing now. So I got all this money. What's the best way to use this money? I want to give it all away. But let's, let's get a team of brilliant people together and figure out what can we do? What, how can we use these to help the world? Oh, what a great boy. Talk about PhD dissertation. How to save the world. Whoa, okay, let's go. Get all the best committees. Let's figure this out. Oh, that would be so cool. I probably, I'd still do exactly what I'm doing. Oh, I'd love to do money. I would do it. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'd take the other days off. And of course, they would have, you know about reciprocity. So they have, it's only fair, monkeys, bananas. So they have to write a check, but as I've said before, it's to the best cause. But, to whatever cause they want. A foot in the way of new screen over here. Plunk. You know about the little pumpkin that I'm raising of sorts from a distance, who's now 16. The one thing I really don't like about what her, ma her grandma, Hands me cash at the end of the session, 100 bucks. And I charge him 100 bucks. Usually it's 150, either 100 bucks every time. And I always feel bad. It, it's the old, I just don't. So I don't want to pretend I'm not getting. So I even said to the grandma, that's how committed I am to this girl. I don't need the 100 bucks. I understand reciprocity. Here's what I suggest we do. If you want, you can. See, I, don't, I want her to understand I'm there for her. I will see her. There's a kid yesterday saw me, teenager, third session. He goes, you know, I don't normally talk like this, but, and I say, what, why not? He says, well, I don't trust you. I don't trust people. I think, and I, and I said, well, talk to me about the part of you that doesn't trust me. That's cool. Well, I think you just, part of me, and he did say part of me. Part of me thinks you just do it for the money. I said, I totally get it. I totally get that the rent a friend part is really, and I told him about it, the right to the check. That's the part. What I said to the grandma is, let's put it into a fund. Let's take that hundred bucks. God, I'm going to tear you. Let's put it into a fund. And then when she gets to a certain age, we say, by the way, your mom and your grandma cared that much about you, and I care that much. Here, I can't be your dad, but I care about you from my heart. I love you from my heart. It's not about the money. It really isn't. So I'd love to be a billionaire. Wouldn't that be cool? 
I don't have to have the big jail. That shit, God. All right, my wife wants a house right on the right. So we keep our house, and she points, all right. But the rest of it? Ah, oh, no. Okay, any other life? Medium. Oh, you'd be a medium. Oh, how cool. Yeah. Oh, the union's going to fit. We're going to get into Wooga Wooga stuff next time. That's perfect. You know I have a psychic at the top of my, my office. What you see from the street is a psychic. <laughs> so I'll tell the custody people, you know, you might want to go to psychic first. See how this is going to come out? And they decide whether you really want to go through with this. And I'm really sorry. And sometimes I, I remember one guy was sitting, we were talking about something in some city, and I said, Michigan. And he looked at me like, how do you know? I said, I don't know, the psychic I think is rubbing off. Because I just got this Michigan vibe. Anyway. Part of what the shadow is, is the unlived longing. The unlived longing. That's a non-dark, if you want to say, part of our shadows. All those lives that we're not going to get to live. Sorry, I'm never going to be Kelly Slater or Dane Reynolds or any of those. I'm never going to be mine. I'm never going to be Peter Spence. I'm never, I don't need to be those people. I'm never going to be a billionaire. I'm never going to live that life. Okay, I don't mourn it. I'm going to... Uh, now we can compromise. I can surf. I can play guitar in my car. I can do, I can still write some check to some good cause or try and set up an arrangement that somehow gives back. You can, God knows you can cook. Maybe you're not going to have this wonderful restaurant. I don't think you can do a bakery. Be, so we come to compromises. You know, you can play some sport, you can play basketball. But I know it's not the same, and we know it's not the same, and that's why it's shadow. There is a loss. There is a longing. There's a loss. Okay, so that's the other end of shadow. Are we on time? Oh my God! It's 11.15! I've got to be responsible to you folks. I've made a commitment to you guys. Actually, I've gone over five minutes. I apologize. We haven't even covered all the archetypes. Okay, so here's what I want you to do this week. Pay attention to your dreams. Or maybe just a dream. A dream might come. You already had a dream. And if, you, if it's still relevant next week, you, if you'll be so kind as to share it. Okay? Go live an individuated life this week. I will see you next week. I look forward. Ciao now. Again, this is Jung. Actually, it's Jung 1. Child psychotherapy, Jung 1. In case it didn't catch it the first time. Ciao.